This next story is meant to show you that different people have different rates of weight loss and it really can vary from person to person. One of the things that makes me the saddest in healthcare is when patients are fat shamed by their doctors. Ikaika is a joy to have as a patient. He came to me with severe, severe fatty liver, obesity, sleep apnea, and a history of gout and prediabetes. His is a story of the tortoise versus the hare, and he will show you how and why the tortoise wins. He started at 347 pounds and with a BMI of 55. In six months, we were able to normalize his liver enzymes, reduce his fatty liver from severe to mild, and also reduce the size of his liver, which was very inflamed, and he wasn't really even aware of it. In 18 months, he's lost 57 pounds, 38 inches off of his body, and well, I'll let him tell you the rest. In my patient community that I've created called the Keto Hana, he is by far our biggest cheerleader. He has a huge heart, he is one of our educators here in the state of Hawaii. He is a husband, he is a father of two beautiful children, and he has a story that needs to be heard. Aloha, my name is Ikaiko Okalani Bikoi. I am an educator here at James Campbell High School where I teach path core for our freshman class for the Public Human Services Academy. Um, I've been a patient with Dr. Jody ever since February 2020. My nationalities are Hawaiian, Filipino, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, Portuguese. What uh, made my wife and I actually want to get interested in uh, keto, we were on social media and um, we noticed that uh, people were starting to do like a keto diet. Uh, my wife and I have been battling our weight and going on to all different types of diet plans and nothing ever really worked. Uh, for myself, I actually battled problems with weight ever since I was a kid actually. And that's what actually led us to finding uh, Dr. Jody through certain things and through um, keto pages and it was from like word of mouth of just noticing what people would put for comments and that's what led us to Dr. Jody's office. And, yeah. I've struggled with my weight ever since um, I was a kid. Uh, I want to say that uh, it was odd, odd that I was the, I was a reverse for my sister. Um, I'm younger. I came out a really skinny light baby. And before you know it, um, the common weight that would f be for a child, um, according to pediatric people, it wasn't, that wasn't it for me. Uh, I remembered like I was at one point in time, I'd go into the doctor's office and I was 25 pounds. And then after that, I just passed 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. At the age of three, or should I say a little bit before three, I learned what obesity meant. It wasn't fat, I was always called and directed to be obese. I crushed my ankle and because of my obesity, it uh, affected me a lot. Um, the healing process took a little longer. The crutches were only made for adults. I got tons of scars from the crutches um, because I would fall and it would hurt me. Of course, uh, being obese, I got teased a lot. Um, I couldn't play sports that normally my boy cousins were playing, which broke my heart because I loved that. Athletics. I love sports. I grew up around it. What was really hard was uh, people just judge me based on my size. Uh, entering kindergarten, I was over 110 pounds. I was the biggest kid in my entire class. <clears throat> um, first day of school, it was really troubling and was kind of overwhelming. But my parents didn't know until uh, my dad got a phone call. And my dad was actually pissed about it. Uh, I was in the classroom, I sat at my desk, a common um, elementary, you know, kindergarten desk and chair. As I sat on the chair, I just sat there and it pancaked. Literally, it was metal and plastic and it just, I just pancaked the chair. 
I fell to my butt, the entire class was laughing, my knees couldn't fit under the desk. The custodians came to adjust the desk to max it out as high as possible, and it was still too low. Um, <clears throat> the teacher actually put me to the back of the class. Uh, I tried to hold back my tears, and I just smiled, thinking, wow, I'm kind of special, but um, it wasn't like that at all. Uh, I actually felt hurt, and I held back my tears. As I walked to the back of the class, I was wiping my face so nobody could see. I had to be put with a sixth grader desk and chair because that's the only thing that could put me up. That's the only <clears throat> chair that could withstand my weight. That's the only desk that was tall enough that, that the custodians could adjust. Soon after that, I get called to the office and I was thinking, okay, maybe because they want to check to make sure I didn't get injured or hurt because both my parents are involved. Um, they're both uh, educators and they, they teach weight training and physical education and they do understand injuries. So I thought, oh, maybe they're going to just check me out. The health nurse is going to check me out. Little did I know I get diverted and detoured to the principal's office. He pulls me in on my first day and gives me a lecture about bullying. Gives me a lecture saying that he will not tolerate bullying. And I got labeled because of my size. And I was the tallest kid, so I had to be put to the back. And yeah, and I was the biggest kid too. So because of my size, I was labeled that I was gonna be a bully and this principal didn't even know me. My The principal called my dad because that was protocol. Well, he called both my parents. He couldn't get through to my mom. But he got through to my dad. And my dad was actually all the way over here at Elima Intermediate. He stormed all the way to Pro City at, to Manana Elementary. That's the school I went to. My dad was furious. He actually stormed into the office. And um, I didn't know that, but I, he stormed into the office to talk to the principal because he's really upset because I'm his son and he knew that I was different. I was, although I was big, I was really soft-hearted. Um, I like to stand up for people and try to help people a lot because that was my nature, but it hurt me a lot that it, people were just judging me just based on how big I was. They didn't think that I was an okay person. Uh, mind you, my mom was uh, was positive. She was always loving. So anytime I asked her, hey mom, can you cut my hair a certain way? She knew why I wanted my hair cut a certain way. It was because I wanted to be a helper. I wanted to be a hero. I wanted to stand up for people. So one of the shows I watched was um, the A-Team. Uh, so Mr. T, and he was always, you know, I pity the fool. And he always was that person that was big and strong, but he's a protector. So I thought, hey, you know, maybe that's what I can be. I can be strong, I can stand up for people, I can be a protector. So I tell my mom, I go, mom, I pity the fool. Like, can you please cut my hair to be a mohawk? My mom's an educator, she'd be like, sure, son, no problem. So she looks at pictures, she tries, I had a Mr. T shirt, she looked at it, she tried her best, and she cut my hair into a mohawk. So, you know, my mom was thinking, son, maybe we need to cut you like you know not cut have a mohawk on your head maybe that's why the principal thought you're gonna be a bully and i was like okay mom i i love you for that i understand but i know the reason why because he just told me that i don't want bigger kids i don't want big kids to be bullies at my school well to me i know what he meant by big because he showed when he made the made the non-verbal of big he didn't say big and strong he said i don't want big kids so, of course, I internalized that as he's calling big and, big and fat. But, of course, anytime I heard fat, I didn't really think about fat. I just thought of it being obese because I was an obese, obese, oh, excuse me, an obese kid suffering from obesity with that young. So, that's where it all actually started. Um, the bullying, the teasing, uh, not being picked, of course, just because of my size and being considered slow. So, yeah, being, being considered obese. Uh, Would you say that you were your life? Yeah, because even my mom's um, family did it. My mom was uh, is pure Japanese. Um, she looks like the late Auntie Rao's son, the surfer, our Queen of Makaha. That's what my mom looks like exactly to a T. People would mistake her for real son. So uh, my mom broke the mold. She married my dad. So of course I did go over my nationalities. I said that I'm. One of the things is I'm Japanese. That's my mom. Everything else is my dad. So she broke the mold because she did not marry who she was supposedly supposed to marry. She didn't marry Asian. 
So when my sister and I was born, my sister's older. She's a good mixture between my parents, but she looks a little more on the Asian side. I'm a little for my dad. So because of that, they hated my dad. And when I say hate, it's because of what they did and of what they say. And they've used the term hate. So they've always would blame me for things because of why people would call my parents and say, you know, like um, why they get bad news from the doctor saying that your son is big. It's like, oh, because he's, he's like the dad. My dad was always big, but he wasn't obese. He was really muscular. But they would blame anything and everything on me and utilize obesity with it. And um, I would get blamed for anything that broke. They would say, oh, it's because Kika sat on it. That's why it broke. And it must be him because he's the only obese person. I've had cousins that are Asian that are not as big, but they were big too. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't mean to utilize the word, but they're fat. They were. I mean, I was obese, so it's like, you know, I, I wouldn't say hey, you're fat. I never used that term. I hated that term, actually, with a passion. Um, but yeah, just pretty much a lot from that. I would get cornered into a room away from my parents and my older sister by adults and these are my aunties and uncles that they would uh, lecture me saying that um, I'm gonna be obese forever I'm going to get in trouble because I'm my dad's son um, I'm a lazy Hawaiian and I'm stupid and that's why I cannot lose weight and that's why I'm so obese because I'm lazy did this affect how did all of that affect your self-esteem throughout your childhood, young adulthood? Like, can you kind of very briefly say how all of that then impacted your self-image, your self-esteem? I want to say that uh, I hated mirrors. I hated the scale. The scale was actually my worst en enemy. I hated it. Um, all of this uh, actually added to a lot of things. Um, I never released my emotions. Uh, Dr. Cho Jody has said that I'm kind of a person that wears my emotions on my sleeve, but that's how I am now. Before, I was a person that I never showed any emotion. I stuffed it. Anytime I got hurt, I stuffed it. I would never say anything. I would utilize different outs to kind of release it, but I still held on to it and never let go. I would never ever let it go. It was really hard. Um, I would, uh, I want to say that that probably affected me, that I would have uh, a lot of anger, but I wouldn't release that anger. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I even had hate too, because of how people treated me and how people were um, body shaming and um, how I'd get picked on. It. I ended up trying to stand up for people, but it was really hard for me to stand up for myself. But I, I did to one point in time. Um, that happened more in intermediate. Uh, I, of course, what kind of helped me to start to try and attempt to lose weight and eat a little better was um, I was hooked up to a machine because I had really bad bronchitis. I had to be hooked up to a machine for more than an hour to take in. I guess they were giving me what would be considered a buterol. So I started dropping tears. I was uh, seventh grade and I was more than 250 pounds in seventh grade. And um, I just was dropping tears because I, my mouth was getting sore. I was drooling all over my mouth. My, my shirt was all wet with spit. It was horrendous. Um, I was dropping tears and I was like, man, like, I, why am I still just so big and obese? Um, I even had, like, prior to that, I would have talks with my grandfather and say, will I ever, will I ever be different? Um, why, why did God choose to make me so obese? Why can't I be like, my other boy cousins, why can't I be? I, I kept asking over and over again, why can't I be this? Why can't I be that? And um, what was great was my grandfather said one thing that stuck with me. He said, God made you the way you are for a reason. You may not realize it now, but later on, you will figure out and he'll let you know. But it's, it just added to everything, even to being able to lose more than 100 pounds to play football, because I wanted to play football so badly at least one year before going to high school because there was no big boy league. Thank you that there's a big boy league now, but uh, back in the day it was called Bantam for um, for military people and outside military people to join, but it was non-existent anymore. So that kind of drove me as far as thinking about being obese and 
trying to turn it into a positive thing, but it still cut me deep. Every single day, it still hurt. When I look in the mirror, I don't see my result. Like when I was in high school, I didn't realize that I, I was although I was heavy, um, my oku was kind of flat, but it didn't seem that way. It was still, I just kept thinking about, I'm just still being obese and I hate the way I look, but I'm gonna train my butt off because I hated being teased. Then I wanna say after that, I probably before seeing Dr. Jody, I know that I got past, I probably hit 400 or a little over. Just didn't want to step on a scale, and um, I was want to lie. I wanted to lie to myself because I still hated the scale. But um, yeah, I, like after I stepped on the scale, and I was about 380. So this is like when Arlene and I was just dating. We didn't really get married yet. Um, once I hit 380, I just didn't bother stepping on the scale anymore. But I knew I was still getting heavier because I had to get bigger clothes. So. Honestly, I probably got to 400 pounds without a doubt, a little bit more than that. Yeah. And then, were there any, because I know your medical history and your medical conditions, do you want to briefly talk about, were you diagnosed with anything that scared you? I want to say the, I wasn't diagnosed with certain things, but I guess the very first thing that I was diagnosed with that scared me was apnea because um, understanding what apnea is and knowing that um, learning from my spouse from my wife that I tend to stop breathing and I just didn't really realize it and you know I guess it scares her it scared me too because I was like wow I stopped breathing I didn't know I, I, I could do that I'll jokingly joke about it and say oh I'm just trying to dive in my sleep you know I'm holding my breath going down to kind of spirit of uhu and the palani that is really big <laughs> but what are the biggest quality of life improvements you feel you've gotten from i want to say the big takeaways from being part of the keto prescription and living a actual clean and um like based on science based on everything else that based on all the medical credentials that Dr. Nishida has, um, I want to say learning what is considered to be healthy, learning what you needs to be done and what you can do and shouldn't do is really a big takeaway. It's refreshing. Um, also learning those things it makes it less discouraging. Learning those things and being aware of it helps with um, sticking to um, trusting trusting the process, trusting what keto can do for you. Uh, I have more energy. Um, I'm actually able to, I want to say I'm able to perform better in a way of I'm not so tired, uh, although I'll tell Nishida, you know what, I'm still uh, hungry, <laughs> but, but it's, it's, there's, I can see and feel that there's a change. It's a, it's, it's really good. I have better rest. Um, I feel that my, my brain thinks a little better, more clear. Um, I'm. I want to say it's made me a better, it's made me a better spouse, it's made me a better father that I am a little more patient, although people say I'm really loving and patient. Um, I'm that much more. I'm not so upset and mad. Um, I'm seeing sustaining results. It's not a quick, fast change and be like, okay, give me be about a couple more months and then it all comes back. So that's what's that's the, the part that's making it a happy thing. That's what it's kind of making it like a, you want to do a whole Lao Chi Hu kind of thing and celebrate. Um, it's nice to know that there's a good support system. You can't describe it. It's just one, one of those vibes that you feel. It's like when you have that perfect session when you're at the beach or you have that perfect moment that you're having a gathering and everything is just so perfectly set that even the small little things that wasn't was it planned it happened but it happened for a great reason it's just it's something that has a spiritual moment too and it's just it's one of those things that's beyond fate it just lays down nicely even with the small little mistakes and setbacks it makes it that much more of a sweeter thing you know you you end up having that um sense of not just accomplishment but that sense that things are gonna get better because there's a lot of, I mean, part of my language is a lot of shit on everybody's plate with how all of this is going. 
and keto has actually helped me to to deal with it like I can I can be okay with a full entire plate and just say hey you know what I got my I got my work spoon and I got my keto spoon I'm hungry let's go and that's what I look for every single day that's what I try to give that good positive feedback and aura to my wife to my children you know and it's that's helped it's helped me to to kind of be more self-aware it's helped me to understand that hey you know what what I learned not to say it was wrong although it is wrong I learned it because people cared and loved me but I just wish uh, like more medical people could understand it and be a little more humble like what Dr. Nishida is and just really make themselves more aware and be okay with trying to take not just science not just medical but just common sense too don't get me wrong but just everything like take everything into account I mean look at what, what I'm doing as an educator I don't tell my students you're doing this because I said so and that this is what the teacher said so it's correct I want my students to have a sense of Kirohana. I want my students to trust the process. I want my students to actually be able to be self-directed but put, put their ideas to the classroom. Same thing like keto. We're trying to put our ideas and say, hey, you know what, doc, will this work? Is this okay? Take a picture of the back and be like, do I meet? And it'd be like, uh, yeah, but watch the amount that you have. Like really cut yourself off and you're not, you learn, okay, good. Or you learn like, oh snap, I thought that was actually okay, but oh it's actually not then you you're not it's not like a hidden secret it's not like I'm not gonna tell you this because you'll no longer be my patient you're being taught to live your life and enjoy it but do it in a healthy way and really understand what to look for and what to stay away from I mean look at all of these bigger companies that will just want to make money off of us and it's costing us not just our health it's costing us our lives like it scares me that I, if I didn't do keto, that my kids would, my wife would be without a husband and my kids would be with on me. So that's like honestly the biggest fear that I have. And <clears throat> Dr. Jody, staff, they have a good sense of family. They always welcome you without judgment, which is really refreshing. And it's great because I've been around judgment my whole life, just because I've been big. It didn't matter if I was strong and I could help people and I could protect people. Um, I couldn't protect myself from choices and from things. But um, yeah, I'd say uh, Kirohana was the next to getting married to my wife and having my two beautiful kids. Kirohana was like probably the best thing that has ever happened to me and I've ever been blessed with. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like um, it's like my grandfather was telling me and saying no. They were really looking out for me to make sure that all of this happens so that Arlene and I can find you and uh, we can be there for our kids. It's also helped me to have better closure um, because um, Aaron and Ariel, my two kids, aren't our only kids. Technically, um, our oldest we lost. So, that's probably what adds to my emotional weight. Um, just not being able to let go, although I am working on it and um, I'm putting more of my emotions on my sleeve. Uh, and as a teacher, you know, I teach my kids to be more self aware, use coping strategies. Um, apparently, I myself not listening to <laughs> what I teach. I'm trying to practice what I teach, but. Hey, we're human, you know, it happens. Just like even for nurses, you know, they're, they're the worst patients when it comes to it. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, I'm a firm believer of everything happens for a reason. And um, I had to make all these mistakes to get to where I'm at. All right. My name is Ikaiko Kola Nibikoi. 
Ever since joining Keto Hana or joining Dr. Jody's prescription, I've lost 57 pounds, I've lost 30 inches, and for the first time since 1999, I'm under 300 pounds. <laughs>
nutrients and micronutrients. I love that there's a variety. And so she just used the word micronutrients, and that's important because micronutrients are all of your vitamins and minerals. And all you need is actually the most nutritionally complete of all proteins. And that's what people don't realize. And thanks to keto, carnivore, keto, or all these diets, lifestyles, the popularity is finally coming back because I think it got lost somewhere in like the late 70s. Honestly. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's a little political as well. Yes. So, iron, especially, it's number one deficiency in the world. It disproportionately affects women because of men's food. Right. And uh, it can lead to fatigue and exhaustion because it's what helps our blood carry oxygen. And then um, also really important for neurological function. Yeah. So, you want to think right. Uh, vitamin A, that's a big one for the immune system, so important right now. And then, of course, vision, we know of. Um, choline, which we just discovered in the 90s. We didn't even know that nutrient existed, which tell us that we really should be getting our nutrients from food. Yeah. Because we might, there might be things in there that we don't even know about yet. Right. And choline is another one that you really can't get. Uh, enough of from plant foods. You have to eat like a ton of broccoli. There's an unreasonable amount of broccoli to get enough choline from plant foods. And it's way easier to just get it from uh, these organ meats. Yeah. <laughs> and then B vitamins. There's just a ton of B vitamins in red meat and organ meat. Uh, just mainly B12, which we all know is important um, for a variety of functions. And so these are start starting to get nice and brown. Just gonna check them. I like a really crispy brown bottom, mm -hmm. and um, part of the thing that we're doing here is just doing different things to help mask that flavor of the organ meat. Just flip these over, and then once I flip these over, the other thing I'm gonna do because I want to add some mushrooms. I'm gonna sear the mushrooms in the pan with the burgers. Perfect. It smells amazing in my home right now. Mm -hmm in Dr. Jody's Keto Kitchen. <laughs> Do you want to make the aioli at this point? Yeah, I'm yeah. making aioli. Okay, so um, I'm going to be making a sauce that we're going to drizzle on top of the Budless Burger. Um, the ingredients for this sauce is Primal Kitchen mayonnaise. They're avocado mayo. This is the only brand of mayonnaise and most condiments that I recommend because they use avocado oil as the base, no added sugar, and no inflammatory oil. So that's why I love this brand. Second, we're going to be using full fat sour cream. So we do these in equal parts, basically. And for a little kick and flair, I love to add like a teaspoon or a tablespoon if you're a fiery person of June's Awesome Hot Sauce, which is a truly keto-approved hot sauce made by my friend June Patiarka. Or, if you're a mustard person, you can do a dollop of Dijon mustard in that. Okay? So, here we go. Are we going to do the Dijon or are we going to do the We're going to do the June. Okay. <laughs> I do love using a lot of Dijon mustard on this burger as well as another way to kind of mask the flavor. Yeah. If you don't have all these ingredients, one um, way to do it. You can add it but I'm so excited to try your food. Yay, and it's so easy because there's only three ingredients. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering when you said what it was going to be. This stuff is hot, you guys. You don't need to add a lot. I'll show you. I really oh, just wow. added a few drops. But it gives it such nice... How long did that last in your fridge? Yeah, good question. It lasts just under a week. So when I make this, I just basically put it on everything and leave it for the week. Yeah. With burger meat, one thing we can talk about, uh, so the bacteria that we're concerned about that causes foodborne illness is on the outside of the meat. Right. It's non-penetrating, it doesn't get through the muscle. Um, as long as the meat is fresh. Once you grind it, all of that bacteria goes into the middle of the grind, right? So oh. that's why with a burger, yeah. it should be cooked at least medium. Okay. But with steaks, you can have it rare. Like medium rare, rare. Yeah. That is a very useful fact that I don't think a lot of people know. Right. The yeah. so ground beef, you guys, cook it to at least medium to get all that foodborne bacteria 
peeled and, and out of there. Your Steaks old? and stuff and cuts like that, you can go a little more rare. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is put some greens. I like to eat a little bit of greens uh, underneath a lot of my meals. So that's kind of how I do that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, since we're kind of talking about nutrient density, is that 90% of our population is deficient in at least one micronutrient. So that's, and that's it's actually a lot more than that. No, it's, if you it's look way at, more it's than more, that. It's yeah. worse uh, when you look at uh, each one specifically. And so it's very important to eat nutrient dense foods, and you can't always just solve these problems with supplements. No. And we were talking earlier about this, where uh, certain uh, vitamins and minerals can interact with each other. I wanted to mention with our nutrition, you know, I'm, I'm using right now a lot of stuff I got from the farmer's market like just a few days ago. Um, another thing I like to drop information is that within three to four days of harvesting, you can lose up to 50% of a certain nutrient from food. So that's only three to four days. Like this is a good reason to grow some of your own food. Yeah. So you can just harvest it in your backyard. Right. Make sure not to let food sit in your fridge too long if it's vegetables and fruits. And then also support small organic farmers that are picking their and harvesting their foods when they're ripe. Absolutely. So if it's an unripe fruit or vegetable that has to travel a long time, that's going to be a lot of time for it to lose nutrition, and it's also going to have less nutrition because it was picked unripe. Well which is what's carried in the majority of our grocery stores in the produce section. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's the difference between shopping at a big grocery store versus growing it yourself or small local organic farms. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, let's see, we've got a little bit of av avocado here to go on top. Let's see if I can make this pretty. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> and I did take uh, Ahiki Acres is one of my favorite local organic farms that I like to shout out to and um, it's a woman in Waimanalo raising beautiful uh, beautiful veggies she made these jalapenos. What is it called again? Ahiki Acres. Ahiki Acres. Yeah. Okay. So this is our boneless burger and then we just have to do our aioli, a little aioli on top. Make a mess in your kitchen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> boneless burger. Here we go. Lots totally of keto. Nutrition. Yes. You've got your, your true proteins, your veggies, your vitamins and minerals from your organ meat. You've got healthy fats on there from the mayo, the sour cream, the avocado. I mean, what a complete meal that is. And super filling. Yeah, yeah, and satisfying.